What a pleasure it is to be with you all today. Thank you for being here and uh, taking a few moments out of your day to be with me, where we're talking about you are not alone and some quick tips to get over those friggin' gloomy days. Now, I know I said three tips, but I lied. There's going to be at least three and a half tips, maybe more. You're welcome. Uh, first, um, what I'd like you to do for a moment. See, I'm weird. I do all kinds of energetic stuff. And uh, by the way, if you're interested, we're doing something called a 24-hour symphony wave. Oh, sorry, 12-hour symphony wave. 24, 12, hey, it's a lot of hours of people contributing to you energetically. That's going on right now. I just kicked it off an hour and a half ago. And you can still sign up for that. It's free. It's our gift to all of you on this day where we're really looking to let you know you're not alone, my beautiful friends. And the acknowledgement that you are actually a gift to this world. And, you know, I know how it is to be in judgment of you. I know how it is when you feel like you're the only one of your kind. And I know how tough that can be sometimes. So first, I just want to let you know, I think I've said this already, you're not alone. But also, you're not the only one of your kind. There's a bunch of us weirdos out there. And from my point of view, it's time for the weirdos to unite and have something different and, and create something different. And let's play the way only we can. Let's start actually enjoying uh, being alive. And please recognize your joy in being alive is one of the greatest gifts you bring the world. Your laughter, your lightness. Oh, goodness. Um, let me just tell you, let me tell you a little story, kids. Just, you know, come on over. Have some more milk and cookies. Dr. Dave's going to tell you a bedtime story. Um, 22 years ago, I was at a place where I literally planned a date to end my life. And so it's one of the reasons why on this day, World Suicide Prevention Awareness Day or whatever the heck it's called now, it, it seems like it changes every year. I don't know, but you get the idea. And, um, you know, I, I do things on this day because it's near and dear to my heart in a lot of ways. And this wasn't available. 22 years ago. And, and I didn't know there were other possibilities available. That's why I got to that place. And so if you're there, please know this is changeable. I just, I really want to let you know that this is changeable. You don't have to live in suffering. The tools are available to change it. Now, you've got to be the one with the courage to use those tools, but the tools are available for you to change it. So, 22 years ago here, I was a chiropractor living in Santa Barbara, which is paradise if you've never been there, and um, starting my second chiropractic practice. And I ah, got to tell you, I was stressed every day of my life. I had been unhappy for the better part of the last three years. And I was trying every technique I could find. I was reading books on psychology, uh, self-help metaphysics, how to create money, how to change your life. Uh, I was going to every weekend workshop I could not afford. And um, what would happen is I'd go to these weekend workshops and I'd be like, yay, I finally found the answer. And all I was asking for was to be happy. And by Wednesday of the following week, it was like the universe caved back in on my head again and seemed like everything that I, all the changes I had made went away. And, um, and apparently... Facebook isn't letting me do this. What it's because I already did one today. Is there like a Facebook limit? Like, hello. So if you're on Instagram, nice to see you. Tell Facebook, get with the program, bro. Hey, Meta, hello. Anyway, I digress. So um, this meeting is being live streamed. Yay. Good job, people. So if you are just joining us on Facebook, very nice to see you. And you missed a great intro. Let's just put it that way. So anyway, um, <laughs> got to roll with the punches, kids. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, here I was. I had just left another weekend workshop and I was like, wow, this is amazing. And Wednesday, literally Wednesday of the following week, it felt like I had lost all the changes that I made and I had had enough. For the first time in my 30 years on the planet, I had given up hope. That was a tough place to get to. And I set a date to end my life. And I said, universe, you got six months. Either my life changes or I'm out of here. And I was planning on leaving. I was looking forward to it. And um, then I came across an ad for Access Consciousness. And I ended up having a session of Access Consciousness bars. This light touch technique that's done on the head. And I went in depressed and suicidal, wanting to leave. An hour and 15 minutes later, I came out with a sense of gratitude for being alive, a sense of peace, and an awareness that I would actually be able to create everything I desired. I can't explain that knowing. I can't explain how it happened. I'm just grateful that it happened. That was 22 years ago. But when I left that bar session, my point of view was, if it feels like this to be alive, I'm in. So the first and greatest, amazingest tool I have for you to get over those gloomy days or, or maybe gloomy years, some of us have those, unfortunately, get your bars run. Now, I'm not saying it's going to give you that, that I got. I got what I needed. But it can definitely, if nothing else, knock the edge off of the stress and, and give you a sense of space. Because what we really require is a sense of space, but also a sense that we're not wrong. I mean, think about it. How much of your life do you walk around with a sense of the wrongness of you? And what if you didn't have to? What if you didn't have to have that particular monkey or, in some cases, very large gorilla on your back anymore? So part of what I want to present to you is the awareness that there's something different possible. And it's funny because this applies whether you're in a depressed place or a happy place and would just like it to get greater. There's just such an amazing gift of being able to know that things can change. So number one, number one suggestion, get your bars right. You can go to accessconsciousness.com and look up bars. In fact, I'm doing a bars class in October. And we're also having our global bars day in October this year. If you've never heard of it, we get together and celebrate the gift that bars is and has been. And it's awesome. So on the global bars class, you can actually learn how to do this for yourself and others. And you get bars twice that day. Ooh, baby. How does it get any better than that? Tool number two, start asking questions rather than coming to conclusions. Because what happens is whenever you come to a conclusion, that's what you're stuck with. That's all you can see. Any decision, any judgment, any conclusion that you have. Hold on. I'm getting requests. Oh, they're sending a request to be in my life. I want you to know that I love you. And I don't know how this shit works. So I could destroy the world if I press yes. So it's not personal. There you go. Somebody let me know if I should have said yes to that request because I am not the Instagram tech guy, just so you know. In case you're one of those people like, I don't even know how to go live. I know the feeling. I have to have somebody show me every time. I'm like, I thought it was smart. Maybe not as smart as I hoped. Anyway. Anytime you come up with any conclusion, like I'm stupid with Instagram, uh, for example, that's all you can see. So instead, if we start asking questions, like how does it get any better than this? When something good happens or when something bad happens, it'll make it better and better, okay? What else is possible that I've never considered? What's it gonna take to change this? And another great run, what great run? Another great run, a great run. A great one. Another great question. There you go. Is, wait, it just left my head. Oh, shit. Oh, here we go. What's right about this I'm not getting or what's right about me I'm not getting. These are ways to antidote the wrongness. And I got to say, guys, I, I so know what it is to live with the sense of the wrongness of you. And 
you don't deserve it. You truly are greater than any wrongness you've been heaping on yourself. And the thing is, we grew up with this from a lot of people. We learned to judge from a very young age. Kids don't come in with judgment of themselves. They just be them. And then we teach them how to judge as though we're teaching them something valuable. My sense is judgment is starting to be a less valuable product in the world. Thank goodness. Yay, more people requesting to be in my life. This is so great. I, what, what am I going to do with you on a tiny little screen? What, somebody explain this to me. Okay, once I get off this, we're going to have a conversation. about what do I do when people want to be on my live with me? Thought they're already on my live with me. I'm alive. I've got 502 people and who knows how many on Facebook, like six of them at least. Anyway, I'm back. My ADHD rant. <laughs> so to the extent that we can actually start asking questions, we can change anything. And we can also uproot the sense of the wrongness of us. Okay, the third thing, there is this thing we have in access, which is all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. This is such a great phrase. Use it 10 times in the morning and 10 times in the evening, and you'll start to notice your life actually change. You'll start to notice more ease with everything. Remember, this is all of life. This is not only good stuff happens to me. It's, hey, we live in a world in which there's good, bad, and ugly, but even the bad and ugly come with ease and joy and glory, which is exuberant expression and abundance. So let's try it right now. Here we go. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do your first round for you. If you've never done it before, this is your first time. Oh my goodness, we're going to do it together, kids. Number one, and I, I need to count because otherwise I won't remember. All of life comes to me with ease. I'm going to count off screen because that looks a little weird. Okay. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. And if you want, just say it in your head. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. <sighs> I don't know about you, but I just kind of relax and do it afterwards. It's like, oh, yeah, because it's an acknowledgement of how you as a being function. See, the entire target of access is, it's called access consciousness for a reason. It's about... <laughs> accessing the consciousness you as a being actually are. What a clever name, huh? Yeah. Um, and in that, you start to realize that the things that, that have been stressing you out, the things you've been fighting against, the things you've been avoiding, those are always where you're not truly being you. And just a simple tool, like, like the ones that we've presented already, start to create a space where you can see something different, where we start to have space in your head. We start to have a sense of you don't need to withdraw and shut out the world and avoid the world and avoid people and their judgments. You start to realize you can lower your walls and barriers and walk through the world freely. That is a beautiful space. And when you be that, you start contributing to others the awareness that it's possible. Because... I'm going to guess that probably most of you watching really desire a different world. But we have all kinds of ways, well, number one, that we think that should happen. But even more so, we have all kinds of doubts that it could ever happen. And let me tell you how it happens. By you choosing to be you, whatever that actually is. And what you do when you be that walking through the world. You give others permission to be them. You actually become a space that invites and inspires others to know that they can be them too. They can be as weird as they are. They can be as wonderful as they are. 
So what if you considered you getting in touch with what's true for you? One dynamic way to create a greater world. Whew. Okay, so I've given you three tools so far. Bars, asking questions. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. And by the way, if you're having a really shitty day, why don't you just say it all day long? If you do, I'm going to um, almost guarantee, about a 90 plus percent guarantee, that if you do that all day long, by the end of the day, your shitty day is going to turn into something far greater, something you actually like more. And the other thing is, another question I want to add to our list of questions is universe, show me something beautiful. And what are the infinite possibilities for this before you go to do anything? The way this works is when you ask a question, you always open up another doorway of possibilities that you never saw. The other thing is it gets you out of having to control the outcome for everything. And we all know how that one goes, okay? Puts a lot of stress on us. What if you didn't have to control anymore? What if instead you could allow the universe, this thing that connects us all, this thing that actually we are part of, to contribute to you on the journey? What if it's not just up to you anymore? What if you truly are not A couple other things I wanna put in your little noggin before I go is, Another tool, tool number four, is to recognize how very aware you are. You're aware of the energetics of other people's worlds. You're aware of their judgments. You're aware of their, their intense feelings and their thoughts and their emotions. There's a great tool that we have, which is, who does this belong to? And it's based on the awareness that somewhere around 98% of our thoughts, our feelings, and our emotions are actually things we pick up from other people. 98% of your stress, 98% of your wrongness, 98% of your fear, your anger, your sense that you can't do it, the future's going to hell in a handbasket. Just ask, who does this belong to? If it lightens up at all, it's not yours. We actually have a free app. Guess what it's called? Are you ready? Okay, wait for it. Hold on, wait. Three, two, one. It's called, who does this belong to? Um, access consciousness, who does this belong to? And it will remind you to ask, because one of the things that we found is if you'll ask, who does this belong to, to every thought, feeling, and emotion, and every yuck, stuck, what the fuck energy for three days, at the end of three days, you walk around like you're in a walking, talking meditation. Because what you do, if you do it consistently like that, you break the machine that makes you think that everything you perceive is yours. And let me give you just a, a quickie on the awareness of this. So think about some time when you felt sad. Like, well, actually, let's just look at this. What's the difference between I feel sad, which is, okay, I feel sad, meaning I'm now sad. Why? Because I've decided I feel sad. What's the difference between that and I perceive sadness? Hmm. When you perceive it, it's outside of you, not inside of you. You don't have to now become it. And this is the awareness that we get from this who does this belong to tool, is that you're perceiving these things. You're not having these things. You're not being these things. And it's a really, really, really cool thing to do this. And then at the end of three days, you walk around like you're in a walking, talking meditation. Like I can be in any city in the world, no matter how many people, and have absolutely no thoughts in my head. Yay, I finally become the airhead I always was accused of being. <laughs> it's amazing because what that gives you then is you'll be around people who are stressed, but you have a space. You're just being space and you, you can acknowledge their stress, but you don't have to buy it as yours. You don't have to take it on as yours. Last thing, tool number five. So I told you I'd give you at least three and a half. And within the questions, let's face it, there were like 10. So this is kind of like tool number 15. You're welcome. I'm just, you know, wanted to give you extra because you were kind enough to show up today. So thank you. Um, last one. 
start writing down a list of things that when you do them, make you happier. They give you more of a sense of space, more of a sense of joy, more of a sense of you. See, when you're truly being you, you have a sense of lightness. And also what's true for you, whether you say it or whether you do it, always makes you light. A lie for you or trying to buy somebody else's point of view always makes you happy. So to the extent that you can do more of what's true for you and choose more of what makes you light, over time, what happens is your life gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And I do this because you start to have a sense of having more and more and more space, no matter what's going on for anybody around you. See, the gift that you offer the world is not commiserating with their pain and suffering, even though a lot of us try to do that as a way of changing it. Oh, you're suffering? Well, let me suffer just like you and let's find a way out together, except that doesn't actually work. What does work is you having space beyond suffering. You maybe even having joy. And the person who's suffering can then know that it's possible and be inspired to choose it when they're ready. So by the way, everything you've done to try to heal the world by taking on its pain and suffering, will you destroy and uncreate all that, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys, povads and beyonds. That's something called the clearing statement that you can use to change anything. It's awesome. You can go to theclearingstatement.com. That also, by the way, is free, as are the hundreds, like eight, 900 videos I have on YouTube of different tools. Those are free too. My gift to you. Why? Because this was not available when I wanted to kill myself. And I'm like, okay, I want to make this available to people. So there. Also, if you go to Instagram, some of you are already there, 606 of you, as of my count, according to the little Instagram tally counter that says how many of you are on there. And Facebook, where I have no idea because I'm zooming this mother in. But if you go there, there's also a ton of videos, ton of inspirational memes. Something very important is happening in my background. So there. Um, but a ton of Facebook Lives and different things that I've done. Get the resources, find the resources. And that, that is tool number five, even though I took it in another direction, which is like 5A, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> some of you are like, I don't have a brain to hold all of this. I know, totally understand. I'm with you on that one. Um, but tool number five is to find resources that make you lighter. Books that when you read them are podcasts you can listen to or... Um, videos you can watch or people you can hang out with or uh, getting your body moving is another great one. Uh, getting a massage, going out in nature, going to the beach, like start writing down a list. When I do this, I get lighter. Why do you want to write down a list? And a lot of people are like, I don't want to write down a list, but why do you want to write down a list? Because when you're having one of those really crappy days, um, it's kind of really helpful to have something you can refer to and go, oh, I'll do that. Because you'll know. That's the other part is you actually know. And the more you acknowledge that knowing, the more it will grow and the more you can use it to guide your life. I've also got a, a if you go to my website, there's a lot of free stuff there for you too. And a lot of links to other free stuff. Um, and we have thousands of facilitators around the world that also provide content as a contribution to you. So if nothing else, just from that, I hope you get that you're not alone, okay? And on my website, I've got these audios that I call You Got This Audios that have specific topics that are a short, deep dive with clearings, with change right there. So um, please just know there are lots of resources available and also lots of people who desire to contribute to you and acknowledge that you will know. But please start that list and just make it a running list of every time you find something that makes you happier, makes you lighter, add it to your list so you have it for the future. I'm going to add tool number six, and then I'm going to get out of here because some of you have lives to live or something. I don't know, whatever. Okay. Um, tool number six is write down one thing, one thing every single day that you're grateful for about you. And maybe one thing you're grateful for about your life and or someone in it. This gratitude list, you know, people talk about this all the time because it actually works. 
Because you can either have gratitude or you can have judgment. You can either have gratitude or you can have a sense of being wrong, basically. The gratitude increases the joy. The joy and the gratitude eliminate the judgment. And the more you're willing to step into that space of gratitude, even for a moment, the more it becomes your world. Couldn't we all use a little or a lot more gratitude for ourselves? And what if now is finally the space for that to occur? Okay, my beautiful friends, I am very grateful to you. And I also would like to thank the translators and my amazing conglomeration of wonderful idiots behind the scenes making this happen because ain't no way in hell I would be able to be here with you without them. And I would like to truly express my gratitude to all of them. And here they are contributing their time and energy as a way of letting you know that you're not alone. This is the world I would like to see. This is the world I would like us to know that we are fully capable of creating. And now is the space. What else is truly possible? And what if you truly being you are the gift, the change, and the possibility this world requires? Thank you so much for being with me. I wish you the very, very most wonderful day so far. And I look forward to meeting you in person someday and giving you a big old hug. Take care, beautiful people. Bye-bye. Now I got to figure out how to end it. I'm going to hit the X now.